For today's video, we're gonna jump back in time a little bit. We're gonna have some nostalgia, some fun. We're gonna play around with a few different things because I had this idea, I don't know, a few months ago where I was like, what if I created a video where I tried a bunch of like really popular, holy grail OG beauty YouTube products from like, 2013. Since it is 10 years later, I thought I would try to find some of the stuff that is like still available and test it out and like go back in time, let you know if it still holds up in 2023. And I actually asked you all on Instagram, I put up a little question box and was like, hit me up with some of your recommendations. What were your favorite products in 2013? What were your like classic, holy grail OG YouTube beauty guru products. And y'all came through, you had so many good recommendations. I will say going into this, I didn't buy like 20 new products for this video cause that's excessive and like unnecessary. But I did probably pick up like six or seven new things in addition to like some stuff that I have used throughout the last decade since 2013. So it's gonna be like a little bit of a mixture of like products that I still use to this day that I purchased back then. And then also some things that I haven't tried in like a really long time and just kind of have fun with it. This little um, sweatshirt is a sneak peek. We'll get into it in a bit. It'll just be fun to like look back. We'll take a little walk down memory lane together and hopefully you enjoy it. You know, it'll feel extra nostalgic for you. If you were a hardcore beauty guru fan like me, um, you're gonna love it. I wanted to be a YouTube beauty guru so badly. Like I wanted to be one so bad. It was just not in the cards for me, but here I am 10 years later, still making a career on YouTube. So I am very happy with the direction that I ended up going with my channel and my life, etc. But yeah, I just thought this would be like a nice, wholesome, fun little video to try out together. So let me know if you like this idea in the comments below. And without further ado, this is what I used to say back in the day. Let's go ahead and jump into everything. All right, here we are, fresh faced, ready to go. I honestly am so excited. And there are a couple things that I wanna try out first before we get into some of like the makeup stuff, because I feel like the lifestyle stuff was still very much a part of this like OG YouTube beauty guru culture. And I'm so excited. Okay, so we're gonna start with, we gotta set the scene. We gotta set the mood and the vibe. And I 100% went into a Bath & Body Works store and bought this. And this is the Bath & Body Works leaves candle. If you know, you freaking know. This had every single girly in a chokehold in the 2011 to like probably 2016 era. Honestly, Bath & Body Works hauls and like Black Friday specifically and when they would do the like two for 20, et cetera, et cetera, were literally insane. That was a crazy time in life. It is now 26.95 for one of these three wick candles, which is kind of crazy. And funny thing is I actually used to hate the way this smelled. I thought this smelled like garbage. I hated cinnamon and like anything super spiced, but I feel like as I've gotten older, I don't know, I've warmed up to it a little bit. So we're gonna give it a little smell test. Honestly, I do kind of smell like apple, cinnamon. It's like a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy. It's not what I expected at all. I feel like for a candle called leaves, you would expect more of like a woodsy smell or I don't know, something a little like richer and deeper, but it does smell really good. So I'm gonna do the beauty guru thing and have it burning in the background so that you can like see it a little bit. So we've got our USB lighter. If you watched my video of like things that I was influenced to buy that are actually worth the hype, this is one of them, it's so good. My first time lighting a leaves candle, I feel like I'm joining a club, you know, 10 years late. It's gonna smell real strong up in here. We'll see how long I can last with this because I cannot do strong smells for a long time. And there she is. Wow, absolutely lovely. So there we go. She will be burning in the background and setting the scene. The next thing, I am just so excited about this. And this is a Wild Fox Couture baggy beach jumper. Again, if you know, you know, you absolutely know. And I could never afford one of these. I think they were like close to $80 back in the day or something like that. So I found this one second hand on Poshmark. It has wine glasses and bottles all over it. It feels very warm and like almost fleecy in a way, but like on the inside, it's just sort of like a softer kind of knitted t-shirt material. So we're gonna put this on for the duration of the video, obviously. <laughs> I have been curious about this moment for so long long so here we go oh it's so comfy i love this like unironically i love this this is so cute it is like slightly baggy a little bit which we love oh so comfy i'll show you like a little try on clip but yeah 
I'm obsessed. I knew I would be. Both of those are 10 out of 10. Very happy about it. And now we're going to get started with some makeup. So I'm going to pin my hair back. We're going to talk a little bit about 2013. Wow, what a time. I am actually wearing my Taylor Swift red necklace because we were in the red era in 2013, which is crazy to think about. I was 25 years old in 2013. I was living in Maine. I was working as a waitress at a brewery and I was dreaming about the day that that I could be a full-time YouTuber. Like literally, I thought about it all the time. I studied YouTube. I was so obsessed with the idea of doing this for a job that felt really creative and like fulfilling. And it's just crazy to me because now here we are 10 years later, I never could have imagined. And I'm just so, so grateful. We'll pause that really quick because I'm starting with my very first product, which is the Benefit Professional. This was like all the rage back then. And I got this in like a sample free gift bag thing one time, I think maybe like actually in an advent calendar i'm not sure but oh okay here we go we're gonna try it out i need to get my mirror okay we'll just put a little bit on my areas where i have the most pores oh my god this really is good like it really glides on there i think i used a little bit too much so we'll just like spread it around everywhere but yeah the reason that i even started a youtube channel was because i was like a youtube viewer first and i wanted to be a beauty guru so bad it was like all i wanted in life this stuff feels amazing by the way what the heck I don't know how well it's like hiding my pores or anything, but it feels like literal soft, powdery, smooth heaven. So this is, it's still good. I'm going on a trip coming up here pretty soon. So I think maybe I'll take that with me. But anyways, okay, for foundation, this, speaking of like being obsessed with YouTube and watching YouTubers, this was that girl back in the day. And this is the Revlon Colorstay Longwear Foundation. I'm 99% sure I got the wrong shade. Um, this is in the shade 150. I think it's gonna be a little bit too light, but that's okay, we're gonna go with it. I do remember this was my shade back in the day. And honestly, how fitting. Like I never had a single matched foundation a day in my life until I was like 30 years old. I also didn't fill in my eyebrows in 2013. So that is the only thing that I did ahead of this video, but you know, it's fine. The girlies that like I was obsessed with that used this foundation, which this did not have a pump back then, by the way, this is new. I'm gonna use like one pump. I don't know, is that too much, too little? I used to slather my face in this stuff. Oh my God. But anyway, all the girls that I loved were obsessed with this foundation, like Ingrid, Miss Glamorazzi, um, Fleur de Force I was obsessed with, Candy Johnson, like all of the old school beauty gurus um, who paved the way for all of us, let's be honest. Oh, I was quite literally obsessed. I'm gonna do a little bit more of this. It honestly doesn't look bad. I remember just caking this stuff on back in the day though. Like I never learned that you could do like a thin layer of foundation and then like dab on some concealer. I just put on like six layers of foundation. <laughs> honestly, this looks really good. Like I'm, I'm not too mad at it. It looks a lot better than I thought it was going to. I thought it was gonna be like way more cakey, but it's honestly not bad. Like I'll use it. And like having a long wear foundation and like a kind of high coverage foundation was so important to me back then because I had horrible adult acne. Like probably from the time I was like 22 to like almost 30, literally. There were a few years where it was really bad. So like learning makeup and like how to do it on YouTube really changed my life, to be honest. I'm just gonna set my face with like my regular powder cause I didn't, I don't even think, did I use powder back then? I don't even remember. I definitely didn't use concealer and not until the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind came out. Thought I had that to show in this video, but I actually don't, so that's fine. Oh, and you know what? I forgot something. I forgot to start this off with such a crucial part of that time on YouTube. And definitely like things got weird with this, but this is the EOS lip balm. And if I remember correctly, this sucked. Like this wasn't moisturizing at all, but I bought it. I found it on Walmart. This is the strawberry sorbet flavor. This one was my favorite or scent. So here she is, this little sphere of goodness. I do remember this smelling unreal. This is about to take me back in time. Hold on. I feel like this is expired. This just smells like plain wax. There's no scent whatsoever. I think this is old. <laughs> Expires January, 2019. Okay. So I will not be putting that on my lips, but here it is anyway. Look at her. Oh my God, I get to do the beauty guru like hand behind the product thing. 
absolutely iconic. This smells like shit. So we're gonna pretend that that just never happened. Okay, anyways, moving on. I do have a lip product that like all of us swore by at the end of this video, so don't worry. But I just got that for the moisturizing purposes, but I'm not, I'm not putting that on my mouth. Absolutely not. <laughs> that just shows you how long ago that was, but I thought they still made those. Anyways, obviously couldn't do anything to my eyes before using the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in the color Milk. This was like everything back in the day. We all used this as like a base under our eyeshadow and like it's just stark white. So we're just gonna go for it. Here we go. I don't remember how much I used to use, but yeah, I used to use the Naked Palette or the Lorac, Lorac. I think it was just called the Pro Palette. But honestly, um, I'm not buying a palette just for this video because I'm never gonna use it again. I mostly use like bronzer on my lids these days. Also, this is a look. Hey, so I'll just blend it in with my finger because that's what I did back in the day. Honestly, I mean, still slays. If you want to do like a whole bunch of eyeshadow, I think this would be a look. That's the thing that's funny to me is I would do a smoky eye and then go to my waitressing job and like not a single shred of eyebrow product. And like, it was just a Tuesday afternoon, but I was doing like a full beat. <laughs> it's just really funny to me. So we're just gonna keep blending this in. Remember how it was like the law that you had to use your ring finger? Cause they said it was the softest finger to like blend products in. And every makeup tutorial was like, use your ring finger because it's the softest and you have very delicate skin around your eyes. And I was like, yep, that's fact and that's law. And I'm only doing that for the rest of my life. So here is, what it looks like. Should I do like an eyeshadow look that I used to do back then? First things first, I am gonna set it because this stuff is gonna crease like nobody's business. So we'll just like set it with some powder. This is so funny. I mean, honestly, it still kind of slays. Like I'm not mad at that at all. If you were still into like doing, you know, a much more dramatic eyeshadow look, or if you just wanted like a nice clean base to start with, it looks great. Okay, I'll try to do like a like a shortened version of what I used to do for eyeshadow back in the day. And I definitely used to do like a neutral color in the crease, which was too dark for me at all times. I just remember spending what felt like years of my life blending eyeshadow. And everyone used to emphasize how you had to just blend, blend, blend. Oh my God, once you think you're done blending, keep blending again. Like we were just blending for our lives at that point. So there we go. It's gonna be more eyeshadow than I have worn in a very long time. But we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna keep on blending. Now I'm like, should I have gotten the Naked palette for this video? Maybe for like the laughs, but also I would never have used it again and I'm just trying not to be wasteful like that, you know? Okay, next we're gonna do a darker color. You had to do like, you know, your initial crease and then you had to do the outer V. Remember that? Oh my God. Oh my God, this is fantastic. And then you had to, blend it away again. I was like never good at blending and I felt like afterwards it all just looked like one of the same shade and it's kind of feeling like that again right now, but that's okay. I also just like, I don't know, I don't have time to blend eyeshadow for 20 years anymore. So that's as good as it's gonna get. We'll do the other eye. The difference between this look and probably what I would have done back in the day was that back in the day, I did not know like the right colors for my skin tone. I would wear like a black eyeshadow, like a black smoky eye to like the grocery store. So now at least I have a little bit more of like, okay, we're going with colors that work a little bit better with my skin tone, my hair color, my eyes, etc. I'm gonna do, you had to do the bottom lash line. So I guess I'll do that as well. I never put anything down here anymore, but we're gonna go for it. Why not? I am supposed to be filming other YouTube videos today. So um, this will be interesting. And then you would do this. Cause obviously you have to blend out that as well. Oh. I hate the way that feels. I hate it. You know what? That's as good as it's gonna get. I'm My eyes will get so irritated. And then you had to do, luckily now it's gotten better, but you had to, you would do like the whitest shade up on your brow bone. And this is a little bit more of like a gold. So gotta do the inner corners. This is so different for me. Okay, it's fine. We're gonna go with it. Okay, now we're moving on to eyeliner because I the eyeshadow is, it's a lot. So I actually used the same eyeliner that I used back then. I have done my eyeliner with this eyeliner since probably 2008. 
literally. And it's the Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner, except the only difference now is I use the micro tip one. They came out with like a smaller felt tip and I love it. I love it. It stays on all day like it says. Because I've been doing it for so long, it just feels second nature to me. It's so hard to do while I'm talking, but it genuinely just feels like a part of me. I am just a cat eye girl. I try to do a more thin line these days than I used to. I'm like a little less dramatic of a wing, but not really. It just hits every time. It's still got it. Okay, slay. There we go. Cat eye is done. For mascara, I'm actually gonna use one that I didn't use back in the day because I was a drugstore girly. I would like spring on the Stila eyeliner or I would buy the e.l.f. one because it was a dollar, but all of my mascaras were always like CoverGirl or Maybelline. I got this mascara, which was probably the most recommended by you all, um, and that's the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. I wanted to try this so bad and I just never could afford it. And I wanna say I got this, yeah, again, in like a gift box or an advent calendar or something like that. So we're gonna try. It. It's just a little travel size, which is good. It feels less wasteful. It does feel like a really good brush, like just quite nice. Let's see how this goes. Oh, oh I forgot to curl my lashes. Do I want to get up and go get the lash curler? No, I do not. We're just testing it out the way it's meant to be. So far, pretty good. It doesn't feel super lengthening right off the bat, but it does feel pretty volumizing, which I like. Can you even see that? I have got to put some bronzer on. Like with this eyeshadow, I look dead. I honestly think this is pretty good. I will say uh, the fumes from the leaves candle actually are starting to get to me a little bit. It's making me feel a little bit nauseous. I think I might need to I think I'm gonna need to blow it out. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to the beauty guru community. It's too much. It is too powerful. All right, let's do the other eye. But honestly, I think this is pretty good. I definitely wouldn't like go out of my way to purchase it um, because I feel like there are other mascaras that are just as good and more affordable. Like I still love my Maybelline mascara. I don't have any complaints about it whatsoever. Here's what it's looking like. Like it's pretty. I can definitely see like the hype and why people loved it so much, um, but it's just, you know, it's the price for me. All right, we have to do the bottom lashes cause that's what we did back in the day. All I can think about is this video that I filmed in probably 2013 where I was in my bedroom and I was demonstrating the new Maybelline mascara and I was filming it on my iPhone. It was probably like, an iPhone 4 or so. I don't know what kind of iPhone there was back then. The footage was harrowing. I'll just show you a little bit of it here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply them to each eye. So now I'm filming myself doing the same thing, but hopefully, you know, the quality has improved a little bit. Not much, but it's a little bit better. Okay, there we go. That's done. I actually really like that mascara. I think it's really good. I will definitely keep using this sample. You know I had to go with the Benefit Hula Bronzer. That is just like the, she, she was that girl. Like honestly, this was the it girl of 2013. Like everybody had it. I don't think I ever tried it until I was a little bit older. Cause again, I just couldn't afford it, but I still use it to this day. I did not have to purchase it for this video. I just think it gives the nicest warm glow. I like a warmer bronzer. I just think it looks so so nice. It gives you like an instant tan and I have a travel size version for when I travel. I have this like full size version for every day. It's pretty much what I use for my eyeshadow as well on most days. Like it's just, it's that bitch. I do put bronzer on my nose. I don't know if like that's a thing anymore, but I do. I love this red necklace, by the way. It just makes me so happy. And like, I mean, I am such a red girly. Red was like my favorite era back in the day. It was just perfectly aligned with what I was going through in my life during that time. And like, it's just so insane to be here 10 years later and to like have those memories and know that she re-released the album and we got the 10 minute version of All Too Well, I would have lost my mind back then if I knew that. And just thinking back about my 25 year old self and having really no idea what direction I wanted my life to go, where I wanted to live, what I wanted to do, and just knowing that I had this passion for YouTube and now looking at my life now, it's just like, it 
actually could make me cry, but I won't. Okay, next for blush, I have never used this and I have never been more excited in my entire life. And this is the NARS Orgasm Blush. I bought like a teeny tiny little one and it is like the blush of the decade back then. It is this like gorgeous, peachy pinky with like gold shimmer. It's just unbelievable. I'm so excited about it. And they had this tiny little version because I was like, I'm not about to buy one of those big, huge blushes. And I didn't wear highlighter back in the day. I would just do like a blush that had shimmer in it. So there was an e.l.f. palette that was like a dupe for this blush, the NARS Orgasm Blush. And then the bronzer I think was called Laguna. And e.l.f. had like a little duo. And I think it was like $3 or something. And I probably purchased 20 of those. Like I use them so frequently. But anyways, okay. We're gonna try a little bit of NARS Orgasm for the first time. This is so exciting. You were supposed to smile back in the day and then put it on the apples of your cheeks. Pretty. It's actually not as like pigmented as I thought. That's cute. I love that. Wait, okay, now it's like very bright. You had to swirl your brush and then tap off the excess. That was very important back in the day. This is cute. I actually like a heavy sort of blush look, so this is fine by me. I'm not mad at that at all. And then for lips, to close this off, we could not go without mentioning this bad boy right here. And this is the Maybelline Baby Lips. This was everything to me. I remember when these came out, it was the Revlon Lip Butters before these. And then these came out and I was like, this is the best thing of my life. Again, I purchased this on Walmart. I am sincerely hoping it's not expired. This is in the color 15 or Cherry Me. That was the shade and oh man. So we're gonna open it up. I hope it doesn't smell. Fingers crossed. It smells the same. I, I do smell the cherry. It's not super strong, but I can definitely smell it. So, okay. This is not probably the color that I would put on my lips these days, but we're gonna try it. Now that I recall, I don't think there's like any color payoff with this. Uh, maybe a little bit. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm putting baby lips on my lips in 2023. <laughs> Honestly, feels great. I would definitely use this. I mean, I probably wouldn't go out of my way, but it's almost giving a little bit of like, everyone's been using the Clinique Black Honey, like sheer lipstick. And this is great. It's like a chapstick and a lip color in one. I'm not mad at that. So, okay, let's like show the finished look. Here I am. Is it 2013 again? Who knows? Judging by whether or not these products like still slap in 2023, yeah, most of them do. I mean, this EOS is trash. It's literally going in the trash, but like the primer was great. The foundation was great. The NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil, I'll use this. I mean, not very frequently, but like for, you know, nights out and stuff, if I want like a nice base. The NARS blush was amazing. The Hoola is still that girl. The Stila eyeliner is very much still that girl. I loved the baby lips. The Better Than Sex mascara was great. NARS Orgasm, like honestly, these are all still really good. I was expecting to have way more flops, like to try more things and have them be like, ooh, yeah, probably wouldn't use this ever again. But I'm like not mad at it. The only thing is blending this eyeshadow on my lower lash line, like into my eye, definitely put some eyeshadow particles in my eye and I am itching to death. But other than that, that is not bad. I love my jumper. I love the smell of the leaves candle. It's feeling very nostalgic up in here. I think I'll finish this off with like a nice little close-up montage of the finished look because what would a 2013 video be without that? All right, so there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and felt a little bit of nostalgia. If you wanna see me do more of these where I test out more products or, you know, try out different looks or whatever it may be, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also turn on my post notifications if you wanna be notified every time I post a new video. Thank you so much to those of you who have been here with me through the ups and downs of my YouTube journey and who allow me to do this for my job it truly is like a dream come true. It makes me so emotional and so happy. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sending you all of my love and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye.